Hello beautiful Pisces and welcome to Intuitive Energies. My name is Jamie and today I'm going to be doing one of your first readings out of two to see what the energies are like for you today. What Spirit would like to give you as information, um, I do these general readings. They're mostly spiritual in nature but they talk about all areas of the life where you may, of your life where you may be needing help. So here we go, Pisces. Let's see here. Beauty Way, the Lotus Flower. And there's also a nice um, dragonfly coming out of this. This is usually my um, sign for people who have passed, who have, uh, who have gone to a different realm. I feel like this one is watching on as uh, this Lotus Flower is opening. It's so beautiful. Very nice, very nice. Let's see if we can get another one. Okay, this one wanted to come. The curse. Oh, ooh. Okay. So ominous. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that. It means that you're coming out of the trials and difficulties, which would make a lot of sense, Pisces, because you have two fours as well. They keep popping out in my face. You know, you have 14, it is five, but it's the fours that are really standing out for me. So... Four is about stability. Think of a table. You have the four pillars. It's very much about standing your ground. It's 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 very much about being stable in what you're doing. I love these cards together because I feel that you're really going into your beauty. And um, the curse is also it talks. I I'll take a look. But I every time I look at this card, it talks about the past. It could talk about previous karma, curses from past lives. I, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not much into that. I do feel, though, that sometimes when we come into a lifetime where um, we come in with stuff and then, well, we don't come in with stuff. We come in nice and ready to live our lives and then we accumulate stuff as we're children. Okay? We accumulate uh, whatever you want to call it. I, I wouldn't call it karma, but stories that we tell ourselves, stories that people tell us. And then that's when we start limiting ourselves. That's when we start living a life that's not in rhythm with who we are. And I feel that this is just breaking that. We're breaking that by you being here, by watching this, by doing all the spiritual work that you're doing. You're really, you know, you're really blooming into this flower. And you're really coming out of that curse, you know, the curse of who you thought you were supposed to be, who you thought you had to walk in somebody's shoes. Now you're just coming into your own. You're releasing it. You're releasing this, this, this dark cloud that you had of who you were supposed to be, okay? And, yeah... Okay, so the curse here, they write, refers to the limiting stories of our ancestors and the karma from former lifetimes that preordains the events of our lives. It is a source of negative patterns and it shows up as disease, destructive force, a blockage on our creative energy. The curse holds us hostage to a false story that confuse, that we confuse for reality. So right there, this is what it's saying. Okay, recognizing the original wound that is playing out and healing it. It is time to recognize the source of your limitations, okay? Did your grandparents live in a mindset of scarcity, okay? So this is, they're talking about past lives and stuff, but forgive everyone and everything, craft a new life course for yourself, okay? So this is, this, like I said, this to me, right away the curse speaks, right away they said it's, it's like shedding that, shedding it like an old coat, an old way of thinking. Your limiting beliefs. This is shedding all that is no longer needed so that you can really, really live your life the way you want to, okay? Okay, so the beauty way is both a path that you travel on in a daily practice. The path is where you choose to perceive only beauty before you behind you and all around you as you journey through life. The practice is where you take action to bring beauty to every situation you're in. When things get ugly, you act to bring integrity and peace 
to the difficult encounter. When everyone else perceives only darkness, you point out the light and help uncover the hidden treasures. Okay? So this is inviting you to see the beauty inside yourself and others. Smell the roses, take a deep breath, look up at the stars. Recognize the splendor that surrounds you. See the beauty in whatever situations you find yourself in. And you will receive the lesson that life is teaching you in a kind and gentle way. And I find that's right. Instead of holding resentment, as we've been talking about, now you're looking at things like, what do I have to learn? What is there to see? Why am I here? And you could have only done that if you would have released this, like, this albatross is the word I want, you know, stuck on you. Like, just, you know, let it go. So now when people react, badly you can look at it in a form of hmm i wonder what's you know what's going on with them not that you you let people mistreat you but you may not take it quite as personally okay because you've shed the negativity around you okay like instead of going well what did i do you'll be thinking what's going on in their lives because you don't feel like you need to take responsibility for everybody okay so those are very powerful cards to begin with. I love it. They want you to walk in beauty. They want you to know that they they that all the work you've been doing has been shedding all of that that crap that you've been carrying with you. So gorgeous, so beautiful. I love these feathers. Look at this, the side. It's so beautiful. I hope you are well, Pisces. They don't shuffle that great, but I like these cards, so I'm just going to cut them. This one says, Risk It. Great things are born from those brave enough to fly. Those who are willing to risk failure. Your dreams require action and you're ready to make a move. Remember, you have nothing to lose. Even if you flop, you'll receive valuable insight. So get off your butt, take a leap, go for it. Okay? They say you may have the confidence now to do it, which is beautiful. While others sitting perched up there, you're going to say, let's do this. I have wings. I'm going to use them. Okay? So you're not going. You're not jumping off without wings. You really do. You are prepared. Okay, I think that mostly here it's a question of you um, talking yourself out of it. It's not that you don't have the resources at this point, it's that you just not, you don't believe in yourself quite yet, but they're saying that you do and that you're ready. Okay, I love that. So, underneath you are loved. I love this. Okay, a little message from Spirit letting you know that they care. Right, Pisces, let's see here. I'm going to do another shuffle. Emotional loss. You have the five, but I feel with the five, the 14, it's under the curse here, okay? And I don't feel it an emotional loss. It's kind of weird because I know what this one is. It's the five of, um, it's the five of cups. But what I feel is that you're losing that albatross. This is what we're talking about. You're releasing it, okay? This weight, that loss that's emotionally linked to you, you're losing it. It's that kind of loss. So that you can be free to be better, to do things. And if you haven't begun doing that, Pisces, it's time. Okay, it's time to work on those things. You will have a freedom in your life that you have never felt before by doing that. You're going to cause healing and advancement in leaps and bounds that you have never, ever uh, that you've never experienced, okay? 
I love that because you almost see it like you see the, the, the heartache almost like being released in waves. Like just releasing it to the universe, releasing it to the cosmos. Like just let it go, okay? You got to release these these curses of pain and these these feelings of guilt and stuff that that relates to the past okay some of you may say how do I do that Jane address them okay don't ignore them if you need to cry cry if you need to speak speak if you need to write write it down make it until you yeah make it until you can um, get rid of them you have a lot of cups today emotional withdrawal see that you have to withdraw, and this is the answer to what I was saying. For some of you, you're going like, I don't know if I can... Yes, just leave and go somewhere. Go on retreat. The normal Eight of Cups, you see somebody walking into the mountains. Take a time out if you need to. Deal with it. This is an extra special message today because we've been very, very positive. And this is very positive, but I feel this is more to give some of you the... Um, Maybe a little bit of ideas on how to fix whatever's going on is what I'm getting here. They feel that some of you are ready to move on this path of of letting go of this stuff, but they're you you're just feeling a little bit uh, perplexed at, at as to where to begin. I would say mm, three quarters of the stuff that we deal with deal from childhood. I know I sound like a therapist, but really it's sad because it's the very first uh, experiences we have and they shape and form us so deeply because we have nothing to refer on and nothing else. We, we're so trusting and believing in everything when we first come here. We think the world is just wonderful. We actually are children and we are very innocent when we come here and then things happen and we start seeing the reality or the reality we're, we're shown and a lot of that um, I, it, it, it's it's not the scars us but it does mar us and for the generation who came before uh, you know the the baby boomers and the Gen Xers and all that we're not living in a, in a place where we are now where you can't say boo to anybody without you know having some kind of social uprising um, we had to put up with a lot okay and I'm not I'm not like I'm not judging anybody I'm just saying that's the way it was that's just the way it felt okay so we have a little bit of a ways to go okay but we can get over this we can triumph and this I do believe is a chariot in this we need to drive that momentum we need to bring it forward I'm sorry I thought I heard something um, to get past this okay yes of course we need to do more work than some who have the the luck of just you know being born and and parents being sensitive to uh, the fact that they know that they're shaping very very young minds and that their first experiences here need to be um, gentle enough not to crush them or crush the dreams or the belief in themselves but for some of us we just we we weren't we didn't have that and you can't even blame the parents because they didn't have it okay it's it's an evolution of things that's just the way it is so maybe some of you need to emotionally withdraw okay to deal with the loss because they're both have emotional withdrawal emotional loss so you have to withdraw to deal with the loss and to um, get rid of this curse okay but you have to do it. This is a drive card. This is a momentum. So that means you have to drive this healing. You have to do it yourself. A lot of people in our lives, they're showing me we wait for somebody to see the errors in their ways and, and to come and ask for forgiveness. Uh, you may wait a long time. So it's better to just deal with it and realize that if things happened and they shaped who you are, to just... Uh, thank you. Thank them for the lesson that it's given you and everything you've learned and how it's shaped you so far in the positive ways because there's always something good. Like I said, contrast is good in our life. If we don't, 
if we don't have any contrast, this is <laughs> this discontent and boredom. It's like sitting in a white room and being white. You'll never see the difference. So we have to realize that all of these things that we've come through, all of these um, things that we've carried with us, we'll only feel relief from them, from having them in the first place. If we never had them, we would be completely bored. Okay, there'd be nothing for us to do. We'd live, I mean, a rose garden is beautiful, but if you just walk in a rose garden every day, um, seeing the same rose over and over again, um, it's kind of, you know, it's the same thing. I, I, you know, we live for a challenge. We need more. We need to discover things. We, we were just born that way. That's why we come out looking for things and exploring different things. Okay, that's why we get into trouble, because that is who we are. We want the challenges. That's why we have this beautiful journey. So just remember, while you are saying, well, everything happened to me because of this, this curse and, and how I was treated, these contrasts were meant for you to meet the challenge and to rise above and to learn something. Okay, so it's always, yes, it's always a lesson. And it's to get that and to triumph, okay? To triumph over things, to make them, to get over them. I mean, when you, when you make it at something, when you work at something and you make it, what a feeling. What a feeling. What if you never had anything to overcome, Pisces? Do you think it would feel half as good? I don't think so. I don't think so. So let's be real serious about it and let's really put it in context of mind and thinking about it in a rational way or when, with the with the swords kind of mastermind kind of way. If we never had anything to overcome, would we feel half as good? Probably not. So life is about challenges and that will always be, that will always remain. But you can live in a challenge and trying to overcome them in the best possible way. Or you can just live as a victim and feel like you never get anything done or you can never get past anything. So, you know, it's all perspective again. It's all about finding that, that all important balance. I agree sometimes life throws you some stuff, but it's seeing the beauty in life, okay? This is what this is. This is this explanation as well. Do you see the beauty in life? Do you see what's going on around you? Hmm. Do you see it in the very best way possible? Okay. So triumphant success and triumph. Okay. You need to lead this charge in the best way possible. This right in the middle. I mean, it's it it really carries in. It's how you carry yourself. Okay. You can call yourself someone who survived. And I used to say this when all of the things that happened to me, I used to say to people, I'm a survivor. And that sounds like I had to overcome nefarious stuff. And I, I felt that that wasn't true. And I said, after a while, I just said, no, I finally learned how to live. Okay? I met the challenges. And I found out what I wanted and didn't want it. And live my, living my life to the fullest, I'm not surviving life. I'm living life. Absolutely. Okay. Right. New beginnings. I love this. So this is telling you to prepare because when you do this, when you let everything go, when you have a fresh perspective, when you don't take everything that everybody is doing as a direct affront to you, as a weight of the world on your shoulders, when you finally let go of that last curse, that last albatross, and start taking things in as learning experiences, and that everything is beautiful, and that you can triumph over things, and thank God for the challenge, because life would be boring otherwise, you're going to have a fresh new beginning. You're going to invite new beginnings in. You're going to invite new challenges. You're going to invite um, fresh perspectives and happiness, okay? Right. And partnerships and alliances. I love this. This partnership and alliance card, this is the three of pentacles, I do believe. Or is it the three of wands? It's purple. It could be wands, I think. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. To me, I see here partnerships with people who feel the same way, who want to be around your energy because they think 
nothing gets her down, you know. Building can fall around her and she's thinking, hey, I'm still standing right here. Isn't that novel? You know, everything went around me, but I must be standing on the right spot, you know. The sun is still shining on me. People are attracted to people like this. And I'm not saying that you can't have a bad day, Pisces. Absolutely, we all do. Oh my, I have my share. You guys can't see it because I come here to give spirit messages. But as a person, I, I'm just like you. Probably worse some days. Absolutely. I can sit and grovel like the best of them. Oh yeah, I feel sorry for myself like the best of them. Absolutely. But the thing is, is I don't stay there. I don't. I refuse to stay there. I can't. It just feels yucky and bad. Something deep inside me wants to live. And this is what this is. You want to live and you want to be happy again. So you meet that challenge, whatever way. You do what you need to do inside of yourself to deal with that emptiness. Deal with those, um, those challenges that are bringing you down, that make you feel like you've cursed. I did feel like I was cursed for a long time. You guys, a lot of you know my story. I've had a lot to overcome. And yes, yeah, sometimes I felt like, wow, well, uh, yeah, my life really sucks at times. But it's okay. It's okay, Pisces, okay? I find that the more it sucked, the more I wanted to fight to live the very best life possible. And I feel that was a gift that was given to me from from my past experiences, from my times here. It's something that I learned, that I needed, that was important. It was in my goodies bag to bring with me to just get myself back up and keep going. Okay? And I wish you the same. I wish you the same light, that little light that keeps shining in there, telling yourself that tomorrow's going to be a better day, that you are not cursed that you can make your own life and make your own way and drive your own success with this chariot, okay? Ooh, that is a good one. All right, Pisces, well, I'm going to let you go with this one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extended. So if you have not already subscribed, please do, and please hit that like button. It really helps this channel. Comment, tell me. In one word, what you are today, I am in a word. I'll know, I'll enter you into giveaway. The reason I do these things is because I want you to look at your life and see it in a way um, of what you, you are seeing every day in one word. Is it a good word? If I were you, I'd try to pick the best word possible. I want you to really think about how you envision your every day. We only have a certain amount of days here. If you say, I am sad, you have committed to being sad that entire day. Okay? So I want you to remember that these things happen. Yes, you can be sad. Just don't make it for an entire day. Like I said, we don't know how much time we have here. I just want you to be, um, what is it, aware. Aware of how you treat every day in one word. And then I want you to look back. I would suggest that you write it down with the date, just the date and the word that you picked for every day. And then at the end of the month, just look and see. Um, and see how many of those words were good and how many were maybe sad or negative. And just work on it. Work on it, okay? It's just to make you aware aware of what you do internally because we only admit it sometimes to ourselves if you don't want to do it here and you just want to do it in a notebook that's fine too um thank you so much pisces i'm going to let you go with this i'm going to concentrate on the extended later on and uh take care of yourself okay a lot of love light and blessings to you